It's been a long time since there's been a laptop as controversial as the Dell XPS 14. It sparked curiosity, bewilderment, and yes, even anger. But let's take a deep breath and just take an honest look at what this brand new XPS 14 has to offer. What's up everyone? Look, if there's been one laptop I've been excited about seeing ever since CES, it's this one. The primary reason is because as a reviewer, I like new things, new designs, technology that attempts to do something new, regardless of whether or not it falls on its face. Secondly, I was interested in this one because it's the first 14 inch laptop Dell has made with a discrete GPU inside. But does all that add up to a laptop that you should actually go out and buy? Now that is the question. So let's get into it. Now, just to catch you up real fast in case you're like, wait, what happened to the XPS 15? What happened to this entire lineup? I got you. So the XPS 14 is a brand new laptop in the lineup along with the XPS 16. And these two laptops replaced the XPS 15 and XPS 17. So the XPS 14 really does feel like a device that sits right in between the 13 and 15 inch models in terms of size. It's the exact same thickness as the old XPS 15, and it's just around an inch smaller in terms of length and width. Definitely feels more portable, but of course you are sacrificing some performance since the XPS 15 could be configured up to an RTX 4070, while the XPS 14 maxes out at a 4050, but more on that later. And just for another size comparison, the XPS 14 is definitely similar in size to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. The XPS 14 has a slightly larger screen at 14 and a half inches diagonally, making for a slightly wider footprint on the table, but all in all, very similar in size, which is important. None of that, however, is the first thing you notice about the XPS 14, at least not upon seeing it for the first time, because it has these two very eye-catching design features that make it really unique. The first one is one I actually really love, which is the seamless haptic feedback trackpad. This invisible trackpad blends right into the palm rest using a single surface, and it feels amazing. Dell's using a different vendor for the XPS 14 touchpad than the one used on the previous laptop that used the same type of touchpad, which was the XPS 13 Plus. And this one is much better. Tracking and clicking all feels super smooth and precise, much like those found on the MacBook Pro or the Surface Laptop Studio. Now, I know many of you out there don't actually like the fact that it's invisible, that you can't actually see the edges of the trackpad, but I promise you, it's really not that big of a deal. Because the size of the touchpad itself is actually so wide that I just haven't run into this as an issue, and palm rejection, importantly, is also really great too. Almost never have I found myself crossing over that invisible boundary in normal use or have had misclicks or anything like that. And for the exchange for this really sleek look, I'm totally cool with it. You might feel differently, but that's just where I'm at with it. I love the sort of off-white color option here too. It adds even more to the really clean aesthetic. And of course, the whole thing is as rigid a laptop as you'll find. There's very little screen wobble and not even a hint of flex anywhere in this thing. My only real complaint on the build is that it's annoyingly difficult to open the lid with one hand. There's no lip or anywhere to put your finger to prop it up, so you pretty much always need two hands to pry it open. And it's not the hinge itself that's too tight either, which was a problem back in the day with the old XPS 13. Once you get it open, it totally opens fine, it's just that it's gonna take you two hands most of the time. Kind of a nitpick, I know, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Getting back to the second eye-catching feature, and this one's a bit more controversial, and that's the capacitive touch buttons that have replaced the row of function keys on the keyboard. And this is, again, another element carried over from the old XPS 13 Plus. And here's where I'm a bit more ambivalent about this. For me, not having physical function keys isn't the biggest deal in the world. I don't use them in my day-to-day -day much beyond changing volume or brightness here and there, and the touch buttons are responsive enough to get the job done. It's also a bit more forgivable to me since the typing experience in general on the XPS 14 is fantastic. Always loved these large zero lattice keycaps and the whole keyboard has this soft touch texture on it that I really find comfortable to type on. But again, getting back to those touch buttons, I just wish they provided a little bit of haptic feedback, which is the same thing I thought when they first showed up on the XPS 13 Plus. But that's just me. If you do happen to be someone who relies heavily on function keys for whatever reason, this is going to be the first deal breaker for the XPS 14 of among a few probably. 
I say that because there are two other decisions made on the XPS 14 that might leave a bad taste in your mouth. And the first is the soldered RAM and storage, which prevents you from easily upgrading or fixing your system on your own. This laptop's predecessor, the XPS 15, did have upgradable parts, including an open SSD slot, and it's sad to see Dell heading in the wrong direction here. On the other hand, Dell is far from alone. In fact, you won't find many of this laptop's direct competitors that still actually let you upgrade RAM in particular, though laptops like the Lenovo Slim 9 and the Surface Laptop Studio 2 at least still let you upgrade storage. The good news is that the RAM provided by Dell is super fast, and Dell does offer plenty of configuration options, starting at 16 gigabytes of RAM, but going up to 64 gigabytes, while storage goes from 512 gigabytes up to four terabytes. So you can get what you want, but you're stuck with it and you're probably gonna pay a lot for it. Now, before we get to the display and the performance, which I'm really excited to talk about, we gotta address one other point of frustration surrounding the XPS 14, and that's the port selection. This isn't a huge change from the XPS 15. It's still almost entirely USB-C based, and you've still got three, all of which are Thunderbolt 4. Now, next to the one on the side is flanked by a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. And that's where the frustration comes in because the old XPS 15 came with a full size SD card slot. Now, I know that there are some use cases for micro SD, but for anyone hoping to use the XPS 14 for some photo or video editing, this is a bad move. I've really liked the trend to bring back full size SD card slots on laptops, and the XPS 15 of the past was part of that. And now that even Apple has reversed its stance on ports with the MacBook Pro, having limited ports just isn't as fashionable as it once was, especially not on these more powerful laptops. But hey, at least it still has a headphone jack. You can't even say that much on the new XPS 13. Now I know what you're thinking, a lot of what I've said so far might sound negative. And here's where I'm about to turn a corner and talk about a lot of very good things about this laptop. And the first thing to mention is the screen. Now, of course, I got sent the higher end of the two options, which is this 3.2K OLED panel with a refresh rate of 120 Hertz. These are the first XPS displays to support higher refresh rates, and I love to see it. It adds so much to the overall premium feel of using the system. When you're paying over 2000 bucks for a laptop, you want it to feel as responsive and modern as possible. Not only is this an OLED panel, I'm happy to say that it's quite a good one. The colors are fantastic with really excellent coverage and some of the best out of the box color accuracy I've ever seen on a laptop. And since this is OLED and certified at Display HDR 500, you do get some decent HDR performance here too, whether that's for games or for videos or movies. You'll just wanna make sure to toggle HDR on and off when you need it because leaving it on really washes out the colors for anything that's not HDR content. That's nothing new to this laptop, that's just a Windows thing. Sometimes reflections can be a problem with these really glossy OLED screens, but the XPS 14 handles them pretty well, and it doesn't have a thick plastically layer on it either like the OLED laptops of the past. But being OLED, the screen doesn't get nearly as bright as the MacBook Pro, let's say. In fact, in SDR, the XPS 14 only maxes out at 374 nits, as I measured it, compared to the close to 600 nits of the MacBook Pro. But for almost every scenario, this is going to be plenty bright. Again, the base configuration is a lot less impressive sounding, but even there, you're at least getting a 120 Hertz refresh rate at that starting price, which is awesome. I'm so glad that this is starting to become a standard on non-gaming laptops across both IPS and OLED. But look, if the XPS 14 wants to be a proper alternative to the MacBook Pro, it's gotta be able to compete on the performance front. And on the top end, it really can. I mean, the M3 Max in the 14 inch MacBook Pro is far more powerful than anything you can put in the XPS 14, but it can compete much better against the M3 or M3 Pro, at least in terms of GPU performance. My unit came with the RTX 4050 and the Core Ultra 7 165H, which is a variant made only for commercial configurations, but it's nearly identical to the 155H that you'll be able to buy. But all in all, I was happy with the performance of the XPS 14, especially compared to many of its direct competitors on the Windows side. 
but multi-core CPU performance is stronger than in machines like the ZenBook 14, the HP Spectre X360 14, or the Acer Swift Go 14, all laptops we've reviewed recently. And it even has a marginal CPU increase over last year's XPS 15 as well. Now, the single core performance of any of the M3 chips from Apple's side will certainly run circles around the Core Ultra 7, but the RTX 4050 handles itself really well against MacBook graphics, even beating out last generation's M2 Max. And again, the fact that the XPS 14 has an RTX 4050 configuration at all feels like a big deal. It's definitely the most compact laptop that Dell has ever made with discrete graphics, competing more on the same level as the Lenovo Slim 9, Acer Swift X14, and the Surface Laptop Studio 2, or even the ROG Zephyrus G14. And among all those, the XPS 14 sits somewhere in the middle, especially in creative applications and games. As long as you check your settings, you're not going to have a hard time playing your typical esports games. And even in something like Cyberpunk 2077, as long as you turn on DLSS, you get some decent frame rates in 1200p, up to 94 frames per second if you turn on frame generation and that whole shebang. Now, it's not as fast in video editing as an M3 Max MacBook Pro, nor is it as good in games as a proper gaming laptop, even something like the Alienware X14 to stay within the Dell ecosystem. So no, this isn't a dedicated gaming or video editing laptop, but if you want to dabble in either, there's the performance and display to allow for both. And I like the middle ground that the XPS 14 sits in, at least this model with the better graphics. Now, there are a few other really important things to talk about with the XPS 14, such as the battery life, which is okay. Like performance, it's about in the middle of the pack, lasting around eight and a half hours in very light web browsing on its 70 watt hour battery. In a normal day of work though, you'll get through a solid chunk of your day on battery, but probably not much more than four or five hours. And it goes without saying, but the MacBook Pro lasts just around twice this long in those same tests, which goes to show just how far behind these Windows laptops are. And it's a similar story with the speakers. They're okay. They're a decent quad speaker setup compared to some other Windows laptops, but I really don't like the ultra compressed way these speakers squash down music, for example. I don't have it next to me, but from my memory, I remember liking the XPS 15 speakers a bit more, especially in terms of bass. So the audio is not great, but it's good enough to watch videos on or take calls on here and there. And thanks to the fact that the 1080p webcam here is actually pretty good, taking calls is pretty great on this machine. It's at least on par with the MacBook Pro webcam. And I actually like the more natural, less over-processed image that this provides, especially since they're still squeezing this tiny camera module into that very narrow top bezel. But to kind of wrap all this up, I've been wanting Dell to make a laptop like the XPS 14 with discrete graphics for a long time. And in a lot of ways, what is coming out this year doesn't disappoint. The performance is quite good. The screen is fantastic and the laptop itself is beautiful. Is it a true MacBook Pro alternative? Well, it certainly aims to be, including in its pricing. It's hard to get a true apples to apples configuration, but since the MacBook Pro starting model comes with the really fantastic mini LED display, the XPS 14 actually ends up being more expensive in certain configurations. There's a lot more flexibility here in how you configure it, but if you want the OLED panel and the RTX 4050, and trust me, you do, you're looking at a starting price of 2,400 bucks, which is actually a few hundred dollars more than a similarly configured M3 Pro MacBook Pro. So keep that in mind. It's as high end as Windows laptops get, so I get it. It just doesn't undercut the MacBook Pro in any meaningful way, which does feel kind of like a missed opportunity considering, for example, how much more battery life you get with the MacBook Pro. More than anything, I'm just worried that these less popular design decisions are going to get in the way of people buying and ultimately enjoying what is a really solid, well-crafted device that has to be the most beautiful laptop you can buy right now. If none of the problems I listed above are deal breakers for you, and if they are, you know who you are. But if you're intrigued by the performance to size ratio and are attracted to the design like I am, I'm happy to say that there's plenty of laptop here to back up its good looks. So those are my thoughts on the XPS 14. Thanks for watching this one. Now's the time to jump down into the comments and let me know what you think of the XPS 14. If you have any strong feelings or lingering questions about it, 
let me know. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more from Digital Trends.